This is GTV. True Blue. In the year 2000X, the world watched in horror as Dr. Albert Wiley attempted to take over the world. Using technology meant for peaceful purposes, Dr. Wiley reprogrammed the robots and used them to destroy cities and terrorize the people who lived there. These robots were originally designed by Dr. Thomas Light, who was called upon by the governments of the world to put a stop to the destruction. Dr. Light turned to his household robot, Rock, who had a strong sense of justice. Rock was upgraded into the super fighting robot, Mega Man, putting an end to the madness and defeating Dr. Wily. Having compassion for others, Mega Man released a defeated Dr. Wily and urged him to use his abilities for good, not evil. Things soon returned to normal and peace prevailed again. Over a year has passed since that day. Dr. Wily is back at work building new robots. However, his intentions are far from good. The purpose of these robots are for Dr. Wily's revenge. At the secret compound of Dr. Wily, the evil genius flips the switch and powers up eight robots he designed and built, giving them life for the very first time. He looks fondly upon his creations and realizes his mistakes of the past. Yes, Wiley knows it is better to build robots himself rather than using ones built with an intent for good. With these robots, Dr. Wiley assures himself that they will easily thwart off Mega Man and Dr. Light, and then the world will be his. At the home of Dr. Light, Rock is tending to the garden when suddenly, The good doctor runs outside and tells Rock they have trouble. The news announces that all over the city, robots are wreaking havoc, destroying buildings, causing fires, tearing up roads, and attacking other robots and humans. But who made the robots? These designs don't match any of those registered by Dr. Light or anyone else. From the smoke, dust, and rubble, eight robot masters emerge and declare that they are the robot army of Dr. Wily. And in his name, they claim the city for him. All who oppose will die. Rock and Dr. Light watch on. Wily? He has not reformed his past ways as promised? One of the robot masters looks into the news camera and has a message for Mega Man. Come at us and you'll be next. Without a moment to spare, Dr. Light prepares Rock's helmet and armor, but warns Rock that this time he fears the battle might not be won. There are eight robot masters, and unlike before, we don't know anything about them. Dr. Light tells Rock to go, hurry and do what you can. Dr. Light stays behind to create new power-up items to help Rock, but he will need some time to develop them. Fully suited up, Rock, as Mega Man, is ready to fight for justice once again, running at full speed towards the areas damaged by Wily's robots. Mega Man spots the first wave of these evil robots from far away, led by robot master, Metal Man. The robots are taken aback by a surprise attack from the Mega Buster. Metal Man demands retaliation and goes on the attack, sending minions forward. Our hero is caught off guard as he jumps up to dodge the first wave. From above, a spiky trap falls down from the ceiling, stabbing Mega Man and sending him to the floor. Metal Man makes an escape, while Mega Man gets up and chases after, dodging falling spikes and enemies along the way. Our hero struggles with the Piero Bot, who can balance atop a spinning gear, and Blocky, a robot that is four separate blocks and can rejoin to form a mighty tower. Only a blast to the eyes, which needs a jump, will clear the way. Mega Man catches up to Metal Man, reaching the Robot Master's chamber. Upon entering, Metal Man dives to the ground. He orders Mega Man to stop there, not to take another step, and prepare to be defeated by Metal Man, a robot designed for one purpose, to destroy Mega Man. Now you will realize my power, says Metal Man, the Metal Blade. And with those words, fires off three blades that race forward. Our hero jumps out of the way of the first blade, but suffers damage from the others. While weakened, Metal Man continues the attack. Mega Man responds in kind with the Mega Buster, throwing the Robot Master to the ground. Back and forth they attack as the Metal Blade does intense damage. Metal Man goes in for the kill. 
Mega Man reaches into his supply reserve to pull out an E-can and consumes it, becoming fully recharged. Metal Man is shocked. With renewed vigor, confidence, and composure, our hero sends wave after wave of the Mega Buster forward while dodging each metal blade, sending the first robot master to the ground, destroying him. Standing over the broken Metal Man, our hero acquires his first item, the Metal Blade, which will now be used against Dr. Wily's other robots to bring peace. Mega Man runs onward to the next zone, a heavily wooded region. Strange animal-like robots are everywhere. Bubble bats and robo-rabbits stand in the way. The number of these robots is difficult to surmount, but with the metal blade, Mega Man is able to slice through them without any trouble. The woods end with a hole in the ground as the only way to continue. Mega Man hits the ground and comes face to face with a giant, fire-breathing dog. Jumping out of the way is the pathway to victory. Now our hero has to cross a huge canyon, balancing on thin bamboo rods across the divide, which leads to a cave on the other side. In the depths of that cave lies the Robot Master's chamber. Woodman defends the room. He says that harnessing the forces of nature, the leaf shield, will bring about the end of Mega Man. Our hero charges ahead but gets caught in the whirlwind of the leaf shield. He can't understand how leaves can do this. Woodman's powerful and mysterious weapon also blocks the Mega Buster, sending each shot scattering away. Another wave of the Leaf Shield sends Mega Man down yet again while protecting the Robot Master all at once. Our hero is frustrated. A high jump won't work. The Mega Buster won't work either. So what will? Then it becomes apparent. What would defeat Woodman has to be the Metal Blade. He is made of wood after all. It only takes three blades to finish off Woodman. Sliced up and left in a pile on the floor, the Leaf Shield is now equipped by our hero. The only path to victory is to use these items to push forward until all of the Robot Masters are defeated and the plans of Dr. Wily can be stopped. The woods lead to the outskirts of the city. Dr. Wily has strategically placed his eight robot masters in different geographies so that no area could truly be safe. On the city outskirts, a waterfall and lake create the city's reservoir, and it too has been compromised by Dr. Wily. Jumping out of the waterfall and on the attack are croakers, frog-like robots. Each one has a surprise as it attacks with its young, jumping out of its mouth. They attach to Mega Man and start biting. It's difficult to shake them off. The smart move is to blast the big croaker before its mouth can open. Then, use the leaf shield as protection, just in case. Mega Man can get through, but the falling platforms attached to the waterfall aren't sturdy and fall away, adding to the challenge. Ahead lies the big lake. Mega Man dives right in. He is surprised to see that the robots have built an underwater fortress, heavily guarded and filled with traps. On the floor of this base lies a huge lantern fish. Appearing to be asleep, Mega Man tries to quietly walk past, but it's no use. The fish wakes up, and from inside the massive robot, swarms of shrimp-like enemies jump forward. It's too many. Mega Man can't keep up, and the lantern fish is protected. If a pathway can't be cleared, then the fish can't be defeated. Our hero switches to the metal blade once more knowing that, unlike the Mega Buster, this weapon cuts through anything and can do damage to more than one enemy at once. Now the Lanternfish has no defense, can be, and is, easily defeated in a spectacular underwater explosion. Moving onward, our hero stays with the Metal Blade, which easily clears a path. 
The Robot Master's chamber is just ahead. Mega Man enters, fully prepared. He encounters Bubble Man, a deep sea diving robot. Bubble Man makes the first move, sending his bubble attack right at Mega Man. How can a bubble cause so much damage? They look harmless, but severely wound Mega Man. Again, our hero is caught between a group of bubbles. The air pressure inside is so intense, it nearly crushes Mega Man. On top of that, Bubble Man has a standard blast gun. The combination attack is intense. Mega Man tries the Metal Blade. Just as with Woodman, only three hits are enough to defeat this robot master. It's a good thing the Metal Blade was the first weapon he could equip. Now, Bubble Man's weapon is also equipped. Mega Man leaves the lake and heads off to the city. The streets are empty and ravaged by the destruction of Dr. Wily and his robot army. Just then, the robot master Air Man descends to the ground from his hovercraft, offering a challenge to our hero. He says that Mega Man would win quite easily if the two fought here and now. But to make things more even-handed, Mega Man should fight high above the city. The giant fan blade inside Air Man turns on and sends Mega Man flying up to the sky. Our hero grabs onto the nearest railing for dear life. Air Man ascends and welcomes Mega Man to the cloud fortress he has built for himself. Mega Man says that he will take the fight anywhere and win. Air Man replies that the fight will be a fun one if Mega Man doesn't fall to the ground first. Then the Robot Master flies away. Mega Man is left alone high above the city. It will take amazing courage and balance to survive this challenge. Standing in his way is the giant Air Tiki, a floating platform with spikes for ears, who commands Gremlins, a smaller, mobile form of the Air Tiki, as well as the Lightning Lord, who attacks by throwing bolts of electricity. And if that's not enough, PP birds are everywhere. Our hero uses the Leaf Shield to fend them off. That helps Mega Man keep his balance and not fall to his doom. Mega Man then comes face to face with the Fan Fiend, the deputy of Air Man, built to similar specifications. Finally, Mega Man has caught up to Air Man and meets him in the Robot Master's chamber. He tells Air Man that he will be defeated. Air Man replies that it is impossible to be defeated. Mega Man will never get close. He can blow him away anytime, and Mega Man is no match for the Air Shooter. Air Man sends our hero flying across the room and is dealt damaging blows with the Air Shooter. Concentrated bursts of air tear at his armor. Every time Mega Man tries to advance for an attack, he is sent back against the wall again as Air Man continues his assault. Against the wind, Mega Man fires off the Mega Buster, but it does very little good. He can't aim properly due to the wind. And when he registers a hit, the damage isn't very great. Once more, Air Man attacks and our hero continues to suffer. Mega Man realizes the Mega Buster is just no good. He changes weapons to the Leaf Shield. It protects him from blasts of air and is able to stop the air shooter and take down Air Man. Our hero celebrates as now the powerful air shooter becomes part of his arsenal. Just then, in Mega Man's radio helmet, he receives an incoming message from Dr. Light. A new item is ready. Mega Man flies home as fast as he can. Back home, Mega Man takes a rest, and Dr. Light gives our hero an upgrade. Dr. Light calls it Item 2. The upgrade allows Mega Man to cross great expanses via a hoverboard. It could have been very useful a few minutes ago, but Mega Man is still grateful to the good doctor for this upgrade. Dr. Light tells Mega Man there's also an Item 1 and Item 3, but that those will take a little more time. Then an announcement comes out over the emergency video line. The robot police are calling. Dr. Wily's army is on the move. They have invaded the sewer system. The water under the city has become boiling hot and unusable for residents. They wonder, how is that possible? Mega Man is off to the underground sewers. Heat from the boiling water radiates on the surface. All seems calm at first, but then an ambush. Led by the prop top helicopter robots, Mega Man is shot at and tromped on repeatedly. The only escape is the Leaf Shield, which clears the perimeter for Mega Man to get up and get moving. Going further through the sewers, our hero finds some platforms 
can disappear and reappear. There is some sort of pattern and finding the right rhythm will be the key to success. After maneuvering through these blocks, our hero now faces an impassable obstacle. The underground sewer has no more ledge to walk on, and the water has turned so hot Mega Man can't swim through. More blocks disappear and reappear, far off into the horizon. Does it ever end? Rather than take the huge risk, Mega Man uses the item too, flying over the boiling river and out of the way of all the blocks. After a long ride, the end has been reached, but waiting all this time is Sniper Joe. He has returned and now has an armored mecha suit to add some protection. The two exchange fire. Luckily, Mega Man is able to destroy the mecha suit, leaving him to fight one-on-one -on -one with Sniper Joe. Our hero takes a strong offense, but Sniper Joe deflects everything with his shield. Hiding behind that protective layer, Sniper Joe is able to inflict damage on Mega Man. Knowing that the shield needs to be removed, our hero switches to the metal blade. However, the attack does nothing, bouncing right off Sniper Joe's shield. Remembering their last battle, Mega Man recalls that Sniper Joe would often leave a weak spot open as he fires. It is the only hope our hero has at this time. Sniper Joe fires, Mega Man jumps, and lands a Mega Buster Blast at the right place and right time. Though exhausted, Mega Man moves on, reaching the Robot Master's chamber. Upon opening the door, a blast of fire surges throughout the room. The robot says to Mega Man, do you see my power? Mega Man replies, it was you who boiled the river? The robot answers, yes. And now, behold the power of Heat Man. With a fire so hot, nothing can survive. Our hero says that peace will prevail and fires the Mega Buster dead center. Heat Man surges with power and retaliates with a massive burst of flame. The fire hits Mega Man and scorches his entire body. He wonders if it's possible to escape. It seems he cannot possibly win this battle. Heat Man says there is no escape. No one can survive the atomic fire. Again, another wave of flames heads in Mega Man's direction. This could be the death blow. But what can counter fire? Our hero has a revelation water. He changes to the bubble attack, jumps out of the way of the atomic fire, and sends high pressured bubbles in the direction of Heat Man. They connect, and a massive plume of steam arises from the collision. Heat Man screams in pain. Mega Man was correct. It was Heat Man's weakness. Another round of bubbles hits the robot master as the fire surrounding him starts to go out. Heat Man jumps and tries to escape, but Mega Man is there with another round. This time, the bubbles are too much for Heat Man as he goes down in defeat. Mega Man has come one step closer to restoring peace. Mega Man est de retour. Le journal du monde Nintendo avec Mario. Mega Man est plus méga que jamais. Il souffle, Herman. Il refroidit complètement Hitman et envoie Metal Man à la casse. Docteur Wiley, est-ce que ça bouleverse vos plans de conquête de l'univers Ah oh non, vous oubliez mes super robots, mes poules atomiques et toutes mes autres créatures. <rire> Docteur Wiley, merci, mais le mot de la fin sera pour Mega Man 2. Nintendo. With the underground sewers cleared, Mega Man makes his way above ground. Waiting for him is Dr. Light with a surprise visit and some good news. The item one upgrade is ready. With it, Mega Man can climb upwards on floating platforms. A handy thing to have indeed, as Dr. Light points out that where our hero is heading next, he will certainly need it. While clearing out the other areas of the city, Dr. Wily's army managed to build a giant tower reaching high above the tallest buildings around. Dr. Light makes his final adjustments to the item one upgrade, but warns Mega Man to be careful. Platforms will only last for a short time before they disappear. Our hero begins to scale the huge tower. Enemies are at every turn. 
Though always trouble, the biggest challenge for Mega Man now is making his way to the top, as open spaces and fast-moving conveyor belt platforms are everywhere. Tellies are on the attack as our hero moves up and up and up. One manages to get a hit in, sending Mega Man falling. Thankfully, he landed with something underneath him, because one wrong slip and it's all over. The Tellies gang up and their numbers increase. Mega Man activates the Leaf Shield, which protects him as he moves through this twisty maze of pipes and scaffolding. As long as our hero stays in place as well, the Leaf Shield uses very little energy. Up the ladder he goes as Mega Man fires left and right, slowly reaching the top. The climb took so long that the sun has set over the city, leaving Mega Man at the top in darkness. Guarding the base is Crash Man. He laughs at the idea that Mega Man can defeat him. He gives a warning that he is twice as powerful as Mega Man and he will make sure everyone knows it. The battle begins as Crash Man and Mega Man jump towards each other. Crash Man launches the Crash Bomb. Our hero dodges, but it explodes close enough to still cause damage. Mega Man is reeling from the bomb and counters, but the attack does no good. Crash Man attacks again with the Crash Bomb. Mega Man tries the Metal Blade, but it's no use. Crash Man laughs, saying Mega Man seems to be running out of options. Crash Man attacks again. Our hero falls to the ground. Crash Man mocks Mega Man and proclaims that when this base has completed its construction, it will be the center for all the robot masters of Dr. Wily's army to control the world. Wherein Dr. Wily shall reign as emperor. And now for the final crash bomb. Mega Man, with minimal energy, changes to the air shooter and blasts away, connecting with Crash Man, sending him flying to the other side of the chamber. Crash Man comes back with an attack which is held off by the air shooter once more. Yet again, Crash Man charges at Mega Man, only to be attacked with air power again, this time fatally. Our hero takes the Crash Bomb as he says he is on the road to victory. Mega Man looks out over the daybreak across the city from the top of the base. He vows to keep going and not stop until Dr. Wily is defeated and the city is made safe again. Whatever it takes. Mega Man has secured the perimeter and halted Dr. Wily's army from establishing a base in the city center. But Wily and the remaining robot masters are still wreaking havoc and adamant on conquering the world. Will Dr. Wily achieve vengeance, or can Mega Man save the day? Next time, Dr. Wily's Revenge, Part 2. We'll see you there.